Hello world and welcome back. I'm Carhu the Great Bear of the North and this is Planet Zoo. Yeah, I'm liking how that fountain and, and the waterfall works. I think that really anchors the the front area. Um, so I did some things. Uh, I kind of started penciling in where a railroad is going to go. I figured the entrance, the main station can be kind of over top of this entrance and people can access it through like these cool like sp not spiral staircases but like this really ornate staircase going up on either side and uh the train is going to go through here i think i'm actually going to leave the buildings back here and then that way when people are on the train they can actually see some of the backstage buildings and it goes through here this is going to be like a tunnel of sorts yeah and I'm going to go through here, and this is going to be what I'm going to call it, I think, Red Rock Country, after um, the place in like Sedona, Arizona. And this is going to be American Bison and Pronghorn. Um, and they did a whole bunch of terraforming, spent $12,000 on terraforming. And there's going to be a nice waterfall that goes back here into this river. And this is going to be like a nice valley. And we're going to get like the Red Rock formations around here in... in train over the bridge and it's going to be beautiful and there's going to be another station here in red rock but in between these two areas i'm working on a marshlands for a, in game it's the giant otter but giant otters are a south american creature so instead these are going to be north american otters which would definitely love a place like this. And if you're at all familiar with the Toronto area, this is based after the Courtright Center and the Marshlands that are up there. Um, and this, we're going to build a bridge over a beaver dam, which is going to be cool. And we've got, we're going to fill in the marshlands and whatever. And I've already built the, the outside of the habitat in Pablo and his mate who's still in, in lockup. Um, can go many, many different places. They have the marshlands down here, and they can actually go underneath this. They can traverse under all of this. So, they've got a lot of land. In fact, let's see, Pablo is one happy boy because he's got 1,268 square meters of space, 2,608 meters of water space, in 281 of deep diving space which is down here these are the deep diving spaces but the water levels here are extremely low like the camera can't even cover it camera can't even cover it so i'm liking this like this is just the long grass poking through but it looks very much like marshlands and wetlands so that's what we're going to be working on today oh oh right and I've also got this underwater viewing area where they do the deep dives and everything like this. Again, still needs a lot of work, Whoops! but that's what we're going to work on today. Um, and basically the idea is that there was a river that was kind of going around here and it was originally going through here, but then the Deavers, the Deavers dammed it up. Beavers dammed it up and it created this, this wetland floodplain. But then eventually, um, after a large rainstorm or whatever, it actually broke through this side and it caused just massive torrents of water to start going through here. Um, and it emptied out and it carved out this, because this is going to be like a more easily to, um, to chip away um rock um it's also i'm also thinking that you know what i should just get rid of this and then terrain can i pull this no i can't because it's surrounded by water okay because i was thinking that would be would be cool if the rock were actually through the glass but uh one of the things with this whoops there we go is that because of i think it's just is it just this path that it is so close to the water that if I yeah this path as well it's actually obstructing my ability to to fill in the water so these will be very very temporary um, 
which is why I haven't put too much detail into them. And then this path is going to go a bridge up here, which will go into... I've actually spelled it out. There's the Arctic section. This is like Jasper National Park. And then this was originally where the train was going to go, but now the train's going out here. And this is this is Red Rock. I'm loving this. Um, we might also add flamingos in order to be like herons and whatever. But I don't know. But anyways, enough of me talking. Let's get into the actual building.
All right. The first phase of this build is done. We've managed to get Pablo in such a way that this cheeky little guy cannot. Is, oh, oh, oh. He can escape in two places, but they were hiding under a bridge. Okay. So let's just get a. I think. Oh, I don't want Taiga. Temporary rocks. There we go. Um, I think this one will do. That should be sufficient. And then as soon as we drop that underneath there, there's no way this guy's getting past that rock. There we go. What I like most about this kind of a setup is that um, there's no there's no walls, no walls at all. People can go on a marshland trek through it, and uh, and it's good. So we need hard shelter. We need to fix the terrain. We need more short grass. Okay. All right. More short grass. We've used a lot of long grass through the water to make it look like the reeds are in there, and we're we're gonna add more reeds and maybe some birch trees and whatever. And we're definitely gonna add things to this. I just wanted to make sure that uh, Pablo and the other one, oh, I forget her name, are, are happy. We have way too much rock, but I don't know where the rock is. Like, is is this the rock? I don't know, because I need more sand, apparently, but sand it doesn't really fit with the aesthetic that I'm going for. So I don't want just large patches of sand. But uh, if I can get this up to 70, that would be, that would be lovely. So we'll just slowly pepper that through, throughout. There we go, 65. 64, oh, because I got rid of some short grass, okay. Let's pepper in some more short grass, there we go. Um, I wish there were like a, a toggle that would tell you, I guess we can do more sand here, because this is where like the keeper will be going through and this building is just temporary i have not worried about that much at all um we need some more short grass there we go come on come on i like the long grass for the uh for the marshland effect but yeah i mean I'll, I'll add in some elephant grass and some eel grass, which I don't think counts towards the the coverage. Oh, oh, we need more coverage, actually. Um, but is it 66? I'm, I'm fine with that. So, yeah. Um, and once we... Actually, what's the... See, with the... 29%. Uh, because the more themed an area is, the more scenery you have the more the negative impact is going to be reduced. Because right now this is 13 out of 15 meters, which means that if we look at this, it's actually going to impact guests that are on this boardwalk. Well, maybe not that one, but the uh, the transformer will. Um, on the boardwalk. And also the people going on this bridge. And I don't want that. So the, if we can get a little bit more theming around here, a little bit more scenery, that would be lovely. So, so even though this little guy is, um, or these little guys are South American. I am going to make this look like a marsh in Canada, which means we're going to have a lot of white birch. That's wisteria, that's wisteria. A lot of white birch. Maybe some... There we go. Just things like this. Actually, how does this affect Pablo? Because I know that they don't like... Okay, I know that they don't like, um, they don't like plants that aren't in their native biome, but I think we kind of have to. I mean, 98, we, by adding more of these, these reeds will actually get, um, will actually increase quite a bit our, uh, his, his plant rating. There we go. And these virtues. 
And if you note, I picked this particular boardwalk and these particular um, boards because they are beach or birch rather is what I meant to say. So they would be uh, apropos to the area. There we go. Let's get another little bit of a stand there. Let's get a, actually, you know what? Let's just, there we go. Now, because this was a beaver dam, right? There's going to be a bunch of broken down trees. So what I'm thinking is that they, the beavers just got through here. And at one point in time, they just cleared it out. I mean, yes, this was a long time ago, but we're going to say that these, maybe there's some beavers that are still here and maybe some of these stumps still remain. So we're going to do that. In fact, we're going to keep one right there. There we go. Lovely. And maybe some, actually, you know what we can do? If we sink these, maybe that looks like another beaver nod, actually. I just like the way that this one looks as it is. Yeah, we're just going to keep that one there. Nope, that's too close. Maybe a little bit closer to the edge. Maybe, you know, it died because it got too much water. There we go. This marshland is definitely starting to take shape. Um, maybe a birch tree there. And I want to focus on the habitat itself for now, and then we will deal with everything else. I don't want too many birch or too many trees within the marsh itself. Simply because um, I want the, the wide expanses, like the openness to be a selling feature of this. And right now, I think we're doing pretty well. So what other trees do we want? Those are going to be our birch ash. Do birch and ash go? Well, I'm not a tree expert. I don't know if ash are endemic to, to the area. Oh, elm. That looks nice. Okay, but there's no way a tree that's that thick with roots like that are going to be in the marsh itself. So maybe we get that. There we go. And we get another elm. Like that. There we go. You know, maybe we even plant a tree on top of this. Although I think we're starting to go to get pretty good. Ah, that's a bit too close to the water for such a large tree. So maybe this guy is just, just growing there. Oh, and we're not finished with the rocks. I know this cladding looks kind of dumb, but we're going to do like layered sedimentary kind of a thing to this. Um, there we go. I think this is... This is looking pretty good. We've got the rose bushes. We've got holly tree. Okay, we need some kind of some kind of a a, a sugar maple. Let's get a sugar maple right there. I know that's close to the building, but hey, nobody's gonna be in the building for us to really notice. And we don't want just one tree of a kind. Um, cause then it looks kind of out of place. So let's get a different sugar maple. Again, a smaller one, a little bit close to there. Ponytail palm. Nope. That's definitely not for us. Uh, weeping willow. I wanted to put a weeping willow like over the branches, like over the sides of this, but compared to the elm, it's just not, it's just not beautiful enough. Oh, well. Yeah, definitely no Mysteria. Mysteria, Mysteria. Okay, so I think we're good for trees for the habitat for now. We'll deal with the rest once I figure out um, placement of paths and how we're going to get to the next... Um, we're going to get to the next habitat. So there we go. We just need more of these beautiful reeds. Actually, here... Let's show you the elephant grass and how this is going to work. Hopefully it's not too... Hopefully the colors aren't too dissimilar. Yes, there we go. Because Pablo, our little guy, can't walk through the reeds. He can, however, 
walk through the elephant. No, he can't walk through the elephant grass. It's the eel grass that they can't. That they can. At least I think. Because these can sort of also be reeds as well. Yeah, that should. Yes, they can totally walk through the eel grass. So we've got those, and here's some more reeds that we're just going to spam. So if you're opening this up later on, know that uh, I wish we had taller eel grass. But yeah, this is this is the marsh, kind of a an idea that we were going for. And this is going to take a long time of me just spamming grass. So I'm just going to do all of this off camera. You don't need to see this in time lapse. I think we have a wetlands, people. I'm very excited by this. By how this turned out. Like, this is way better than I anticipated. Like, so much better. I'm... Our otters are going to be so happy. Um, and if you notice, there's a distinct lack of benches and light posts and education signs. And that's because I spent $50,000 on this habitat. Um, this, this cost me a lot. Like, I spent 27000 on plants. Um, so, we're going to need to wait a bit before things turn out well. And yeah, yeah, we are definitely low on cash. But, Dolores. Yeah, there we go. But, I think this is... It's, it's nighttime, and now it's daytime. And we're doing well. What is that sound? Oh, that's that's all of this. That's this stuff. I didn't realize it was so loud. I mean, at, at least based on the senior ratings. At least based on the senior ratings, everything should be okay. Um, actually, let's find out. Yeah, there's barely any negative impact on the guests and let's just make sure that our water is yeah our water is super clean super clean this is a massive massive wetlands um and yeah i'm gonna have to remove those paths eventually when i landscape this further um but for now like yes i mean i still need to build the dam but i mean, actually i'm i'm making quite a bit of money despite spending <laughs> 30,000 on plants because each little bit of eelgrass this like this underwater eelgrass ledge that's 40 bucks i spent maybe i don't know i spent maybe i, I got maybe a hundred of those in here and that, that that's just eelgrass like but you know what this i'm I don't really know what I was expecting, but I'm not sure this is it. Um, I'm like, I don't, I'm just, I, I think I exceeded my own expectations here. Like we still need a lot more work to do. We still need to work around here. I need to finish the rock faces. Um, I need to do this kind of thing but other than that i'm oh i also need to deal with the underwater habitat yes i know i'm low on cash i know that's why i'm just talking but whoa okay okay a vip guest has arrived at my zoo ben klein say hello hello ben klein now let's go back to let's go back to the otters shall we Like this, like it's gonna be a challenge going from this kind of formality into here, and especially here. I have no idea what I'm doing in terms of going 
going underneath the, the, the river bend like this. But, um, oh, we have sunlight issues. Um, we're gonna need to figure out a way to to block a lot of the light. Um, maybe with shadow, maybe with um, trees. A lot of trees should do it, but like, look at the otters go. People love the otters. And when these things have babies, people are going to be very happy. But the otters, I mean, oh, they need hard shelter. They need hard shelter. Hmm, where am I gonna do that? Where am I gonna do that? Um, Cause I didn't really think about the hard shelter. Hopefully they don't need a lot. Maybe we can cut an overhang into Maybe here. Maybe we cut an overhang into here. Maybe that's how we do that. But for now, um, I think the majority of what I wanted to do today is done. So, let me know what you guys think. Does this does this work? I mean, especially once we get more trees back here, once we fill this in. And yes, I know this looks really tacky in terms of defining the border. But once we get more of this out through here, this isn't going to look nearly as defined. If that makes any sense. But um, actually, yeah, we're already back up to 7,000. The only reason I was building on pause is because um, I didn't want to have to deal with like animal alerts and everything like this all the time. So I'm going to let it, the simulation run for a bit. Hopefully Stealthy Assassin is still with us. But there is... There's the giant otter just paddling along. I mean, the North American otter, Pablo. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully people can see him. Hopefully people can see him from far away. But, uh, but you know what? In trees and whatever, this doesn't look that bad. Oh, I need a door. But this doesn't look that bad. I mean, it looks square, and I don't like that, but uh, this is good. Actually, okay, now I'm just rambling and I'm just admiring my own product. But I'm going to work on this. Maybe that's going to be next episode. Maybe we figure things out a little bit. I do not like that humming in the background, though. I do not like that humming. But other than the humming, this is pretty good. Oh, yeah, I also need to work on the dam. But, uh... Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please like, please subscribe, please comment. Seriously, comment on this one. I'm extremely proud of this. I think I did... I think I outdid myself on this one. I think I outdid myself quite a bit here. So please let me know what you think. But most importantly, and I do mean this, have a fantastic day, everybody. And I'll see you all next time in Planet Zoo. Bye!